This is Keith Judson, Spiritual Care Coordinator at the Mary Stevens Hospice. Welcome to this video tribute to our colleague and friend Mark Burns. Mark loved his work at the hospice and gave so much to us, staff, volunteers and patients. Not everyone knew him well, but he sowed seeds of kindness in the hospice community which have grown and are bearing fruit. We all have much to learn from him and one of the best ways to honour Mark's memory will, I think, be to continue learning from his insights and his example of care, compassion and kindness. It goes without saying that nobody's perfect, but Mark was someone who, in the words of an Old Testament proverb, was a good person whose memory will always be a blessing. When the life of a truly good person is cut short, we inevitably wrestle with the questions. We inwardly rail against the unfairness of it and perhaps struggle to find meaning. Mark, on the other hand, accepted his illness and death with characteristic serenity, good humour and concern for others. He saw himself as spiritual but didn't believe in a god. For me, he nevertheless demonstrated many of the qualities that are among the best faith can inspire. Mark's life affected many people's lives in lots of good ways and he will be sorely missed. And our thoughts and prayers are especially with his family who were so dear to him and who will of course miss him the most. This video reflects what took place at Mark's funeral and you'll also hear a song by Scottish folk singer Doogie MacLean that I'll say something about later on. I hope you'll find watching and listening helpful as you reflect and remember Mark wherever you are today. Mark's two younger brothers, Barry and Alan, travelled down from Scotland for the funeral, having also been able to visit Mark just a few days before he died. Barry shared these reflections on Mark's early years following his birth in Inverness in the Highlands of Scotland on the 16th of February 1963. You might be wondering how a Highlander ended up in the Black Country. Well, every summer when our schoolmates jetted off to sun-kissed beaches in Spain or Greece, our parents would take us for our holidays to visit our aunt and uncle in Wombourne. The Black Country did seem like an exotic place to us. There was the possibility of seeing Noddy Holder from Slade, shopping trips to the Manda Centre in Wolverhampton, and we couldn't understand anything anyone said. We loved it, so it wasn't a surprise that Mark chose to go to university in the West Midlands. He never came back to Scotland because he met Jane, they married and his family grew and grew and grew. At school, Mark excelled academically and was a school prefect, a bit of a swat in other words. But he was also quite sporty, learning judo and playing rugby. This was until he accidentally broke a schoolmate's nose during a game. Despite being forgiven by his friend, he never played rugby again. He was very active in the Scouts, the Boys Brigade and the Venture Scouts. He achieved many badges including ones for knot tying, first aid and drinking cider in the park. He always loved music and in fact the last conversation we had was about the music he'd chosen for today's service. At one point he was considering an 8 minute bagpipe tune but don't worry you've been spared that. As a teenager he played bass guitar and once auditioned to be in a punk band but when his potential bandmates came round, he had to hide his folk and Beatles records to try and look cool. He was never cut out to make it as a punk rocker. He had several jobs while he was at school. Shelf stacker, car washer, bin man. He tried to set up a business as a gardener and handyman one summer, but failed miserably as a businessman. This was due to him cutting pensioners' lawns and trimming their hedges, then refusing to accept payment. This demonstrates two of his lifelong attributes. Firstly, he was terrible at finances, and secondly, 
he would go out of his way to help people. That's the mark that we're here to remember today. And we're grateful very much to Barry for those words. Mark shared this poem with me one day and told me it pretty much summed up his approach to life. The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears, but said what mattered most of all was the dash between their years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love, and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard, other things you'd like to change, for you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read, with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? In case anyone thinks that Mark was just a people-pleasing do-gooder, it's worth remembering he had his likes and dislikes, strong views and clear values. His likes included an alcoholic drink every day, preferably cider, and he vaped the most recent favourite e-liquid flavour being 6mg nicotine caramel. Mark also indulged in fish and chips for lunch on a Friday and over time encouraged others to join him. And the Friday after his funeral, we honoured his memory with a special order for the hospice. He was very particular about his goatee beard, which he liked to trim twice a week. He favoured older comedy like Dad's Army and Laurel and Hardy, loose-fitting clothes of whatever brand, reading crime thrillers but not by the latest authors, and had an increasingly eclectic taste in music, little of which was currently popular. Mark also enjoyed close-up magic tricks, although he underestimated just how good he was. He also clearly enjoyed finding ways to help and encourage other people. He was often very creative, always thoughtful, and suggested things that enabled people to approach difficult situations in positive ways, ways that could lead to personal spiritual growth. I mentioned Mark had his dislikes too. His politics were largely left-leaning, and I won't tell you what he said about a well-known politician of the opposite persuasion, in his own words, he had no time for the privileges associated with inheritance or social rank or the riches accumulated by exploiting others. Finally, he treasured a small circle of close friends and was devoted to his beloved family. Mary Stevens Hospice you'll find many examples of the poems, meditations and inspirational quotations that Mark often shared 
either with particular individuals or the whole team. Three of his favourites from the website Sketches in Stillness can be found at the end of this video. Do take some time to reflect on them later. Many of the insights are common to the contemplative stream within every major religion and spiritual path, popularised these days as mindfulness. Silence, stillness, understanding yourself, recognising that you are not your thoughts, living in the present moment. These insights can liberate us from things which prevent us living well and loving well. And to quote the poem, what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. Mark sought to live in the present moment, even and perhaps especially when he became ill. And this practice undoubtedly helped him maintain that strength and independence of mind I mentioned earlier. And as I said, we could all do with putting into practice what we've learned and received from Mark, both his words and his actions. Thinking about all this put me in mind of words from the New Testament, specifically a letter written from prison by a man called Paul, who we know as Saint Paul. He writes about being content in every circumstance, good or bad, whether he had plenty to eat or went hungry. Paul saw this inner strength as the gift of Christ, and he wrote these words in Philippians chapter 4, and I think you'll see what I mean. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely and honourable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions, and the God who gives us peace will be with you. A couple of days after Mark died, many of us gathered together to share our sorrow, pay our respects and hold his loved ones in our thoughts and prayers. I played a song by Scottish folk singer Doogie MacLean, which was on an album Mark had given me, not knowing I already had a copy. Like many of Doogie MacLean's songs, the lyrics can be meaningful in different ways, but listening to the song with Mark in mind opened it up in a new way for me. The thin line that leads us can keep a man from shame. And dark clouds quickly gather along the way he came. There's fear out on the mountain, death out on the plain. There's heartbreak and heartache in the shadow of the flame. This love will carry This love will carry me I know this love will carry me This love will carry This love will carry me I know this love Strongest web will tangle, the sweetest bloom will fall. And somewhere in the distance, will we try and catch it all? Success lasts for a moment, and failure's always near. Down at your blistered hands as turns another year. But this love will carry, this love will carry me. 
Love. 